So let's look at mods you can do to the legendary 2JZ engine from Toyota. It made its debut really in the Toyota Supra. It's been associated with drag racing Supras and this engine makes phenomenal power. There's urban myths around that say that the engineers building the engine deliberately over-engineered it and then they were told to dial things back for the production engine. So you've got a block there that can handle about 600 horsepower in its standard form. Let us know what you found limits to be on your engine it's something i love to hear about just other people's experience and it adds to my own knowledge and i can share that with others on our site and on this channel so let's look at the best mods for your 2jz and just see how to make more power we're going to look at various different power upgrades and what the best base version of the 2jz is for your project <laughs> So there's a 2JZ GE, which was a naturally aspirated engine, and it's a phenomenally strong engine. It's quite different from its turbo counterpart, the 2JZ GTE, which was introduced in 91, but actually it wasn't put into a Supra until 1993, and production lasted for five years. And there's still many examples of those high power turbocharged engines around today. But finding an unmodified one can be quite a challenge. Most owners have actually sought to improve it and just to release some of the potential power in the block. So let's look at the best mods that you can do to your 2JZ GTE block. So it uses a sequential twin turbo setup, which is quite a clever setup, up to about 1600 RPM. The first turbo delivers the power and does all of the work. Then the second turbo cuts in and delivers even more power by about 4,000 RPM. And at 4,000 RPM, the exhaust and the engine are flowing enough air to happily support both of those turbos. So the twin turbo setup is it's genius. You've got a setup that produces fairly low lag, quick response, and massive top end power. So there are a few things that you need to look out for when you're tuning a 2JZ engine, a few weak spots. Now, I really hate saying there's weak spots because it is a phenomenally strong and phenomenally reliable engine. So I'm just picking up on feedback that I've had from people of things that have kept cropping up over the years. So they're things that you really need to keep an eye out for to just prevent any issues and make sure that these don't happen to you. If you catch them quickly enough, you can usually avoid massive costs. So the sequential turbos often fail. Now it's typically the second turbo that fails and it's usually the shaft within the turbo that starts to, to go and causes the problem. So if it's boosting fine under about 4,000 RPM, but then you start to have boost issues over 4,000 RPM, flat spots or poor running, it could well be this fault with the second turbo that started to manifest itself. Another thing that's happened to a fair few people is the crank pulley brakes, which causes catastrophic problems within the engine. So always just do a visual check on the crank pulley and just make sure that it's operating within its normal parameters. It's something that is unlikely to affect you. But if it does, you've got big problems on your hands. Then you've got the oil pump. Now, there's a seal on the oil pump and under great pressure, that oil seal can sometimes blow out and cause a leak of oil and a loss of oil pressure or reduction in the flow rate of oil around the engine. And one other thing to just keep an eye out for is the timing belt tensioner brackets often fail. So the tensioner seems fine, but the bracket it's mounted to can sometimes fail, which negates the whole point of having a tensioner if it's not got that firm base. So every time you change the belt and if you get an opportunity with the engine covers off, um, just check that the timing chain tensioner and the bracket it's mounted to is still secure. There shouldn't be any play in it. So changing cams can make quite a dramatic difference to both the naturally aspirated and the turbo engine. Got a little favor to ask, can you just drop us a like and please in the comments, let us know what car you've got, what your plans are for it, what mods you've got and what your experiences are. It really helps us to get out there. We're a very small channel, so we really appreciate the feedback from our viewers. So we've seen people typically go for a duration of about 265, usually 263 to 267. That's the sort of ballpark that seems to work quite well on most tuning projects. Certainly get advice from 
from your tuner if you um, if you want your cam set up precisely to your, your engine's power requirements you may well have different needs than this sort of stock approach that most people have but I'm guessing that most people just want a decent street car that's making good power so the cams affect the timing of the intake and the exhaust valves so altering the duration that those valves are open and closed at makes quite a big difference to the way the engine can utilize the air going into the engine and the improves the combustion process as well if your cam is too aggressive you'll get quite a choppy idle as well so that's something to look out for um, if you've got a very very aggressive camshaft profile the car can be almost impossible to drive in traffic you may have to crank up the tick over just to ensure that it's running smoothly so turbo upgrades are the next most significant power mod that you can do on your supra now i get asked a lot if you can add a turbo to the naturally aspirated engine and it is possible but it's a lot of work there's a lot of differences internally between the naturally aspirated engine and the turbo engine and cost wise it's usually much more cost effective just to buy a 2jz gte and drop that in place of your 2jz ge but on the twin turbo 2jz there seems to be a shed load of upgrade options and it's exciting to see how things develop in the world of automotive parts and aftermarket parts and technology so there's a big debate as to whether you're better off going for a twin twin turbo setup or a large single turbo setup so we said earlier that the twin turbo setup in these cars is sequential it's a very nice setup you've got plenty of boost low low down and then when the engine can support both the turbos you've got a nice top end as well a larger turbo will generally have more lag at the bottom end when you put it on this particular engine but you will be able to make significantly more power at the top end so if you're building a, a drag car where you just need the top end power and you're not too worried about the off the line low end lag because you spend so little time there then the big turbo option is certainly something to go for but we're now entering a world where twin scroll turbos are becoming commonplace now the twin scroll turbos splits the exhaust between different sides of the turbo inlet um, it can actually improve the scavenging effect of the engine and it can help the turbo to spool up more quickly so if you were thinking about going to a, a big single turbo certainly do your research if you can get a twin scroll turbo that's larger than the stock turbos you can actually address some of those low end lag problems and give yourself that massive top end boost so in terms of power if you were aiming for 450 horsepower and beyond you'd need around 560cc injectors to cope with those sorts of power figures and you'd certainly need a turbo upgrade to get you there those injectors would also need an uprated fuel pump to deliver the fuel it needs so the engine doesn't run lean and with any tuning project over specify your injectors and fuel pump just to give yourself a little bit of headroom to play with the cam upgrade is also a good idea to do if you're aiming at these sorts of power figures with that 263 to 267 duration so when it comes to timing the engine and getting the ECU set up most owners go with an aftermarket ECU so it makes it much more easy to map and control different parameters within the engine and ECU technology has moved on so far you can often avoid detonation and knock with the fast reactions of a modern ECU compared to the stock ECUs that a lot of manufacturers supply so I'd certainly recommend an aftermarket ECU for your project especially if you're going for these higher power figures so if you want to take your 2JZ beyond 700 horsepower most projects I've seen have ditched the twin turbo setup and gone with a larger turbo to get to these power figures turbos have actually come on quite a lot in recent years so even those large turbos you won't get the lag that you would typically expect from such a large turbo and bear in mind this engine is very very torquey at low rpms anyway so even without the turbo you've got plenty of off the line grunts so the turbo inlet size will certainly need to be bigger to support this so we would expect you to need to go to about 65 to 80 millimeters on the turbo inlet and your wastegate and your intercooler will also need to cope with that extra air that's being supplied so inside the engine at these sorts of power levels you start to experience a valve float which can be a big problem so fitting uprated valve springs can address that and prevent that from becoming an issue for you and your fuel injectors will need to flow to about 1050 cc's and you'd certainly need a motorsport grade fuel pump to supply that amount of fuel to those injectors so doing all of those mods you can actually expect to see around about 800 horsepower on your car you're still using the stock block which is 
quite phenomenal. So the really large power gains of about a thousand horsepower and over, you start to look at much more expensive mods that cost a lot more and they're a lot more fiddly. You're looking at a large turbo which would need around about an 83 millimeter inlet on it. The fuel system would need to flow with 1300 cc injectors. The fuel pump and the pressure regulator would obviously also need upgrading to cope with that. And you start to now need to address the strength of the engine. So you'd be looking at fitting better forged components to the engine, getting the engine balanced and blueprinted just to make sure it's running as efficiently as possible. And that might actually help you to raise the red line a little bit as well. Your timing belts and the cooling system are also gonna struggle at these power figures. So it makes good sense to address those. We've got a video coming up on how to keep an engine cool as well. So keep an eye out for that. There's some tips there on easy things you can do to just keep the temperatures down on your tuned engine and how big can you go in terms of power on the 2JZ? Well I've seen projects that hit 2000 horsepower. Obviously you're dealing with proper stage 3 mods it certainly wouldn't be road legal in most cases but you can extract phenomenal power from the 2JZ so it's not surprising that this amazing block finds its way into so many awesome projects and is a great engine swap for people looking for those higher power figures and not only do you get more power you've got a supremely reliable base engine to work on. So we mentioned the intercooler would need to be upgraded. So fitting a larger front mounted intercooler makes a lot of sense. The intercooler doesn't give you power, it ensures that you release the full amount of power from the engine. So as you use the engine and the intercooler starts to warm up, you'll start to get heat soak where the intercooler is now warm, it's becoming less effective at keeping the intake temperatures down. So you'll effectively be sacrificing the power that you get from the engine. So the more air you're flowing through it and the more compression that's going on with those turbos or the large turbo, the more important it is to make sure that that intercooler is up to the job of reducing that intake temperature because you can lose quite a bit of power through that. So intake and exhaust mods make a lot of sense when you start hitting the upper power figures. Generally, intakes and exhausts don't add very much to the standard engine. Engine, They're around really to remove restrictions in the intake and the exhaust. So most of the projects that I've seen have got an induction kit with a nicely designed intake and flow really, really well into the engine. So if you're going for those higher power figures, it makes a lot of sense to just make sure that that's all in place. But make sure you're not not sucking in warm engine bay air to the engine you want a cold air feed to supply nice fresh air to that intake just to make sure that you're getting the maximum amount of power you really want to avoid the warm air that's going to get a lot warmer as it goes through the turbos and in the exhaust the general restrictions tend to be around the catalysts and the exhaust headers themselves there's not usually very much advantage to replacing the cat back or the last part of the exhaust itself so if you've got a restriction in your exhaust system, fitting a higher flowing sports cat can really address that problem. And effectively, it's the same as removing the cat altogether. These performance alternatives and performance catalysts are really good nowadays. So there's no need to make your 2JZ project road illegal. So other mods that we'll just talk about briefly is um, a head work, just making sure that the head flows nicely into the engine, that the valves can be made larger, you can get larger valve kits for your two JZs as well and the more space you've got really into the engine the more air you can flow but the important thing is to remember it's always about velocity of air going into the engine so sometimes size isn't the only factor you really need to scale that to whatever requirements the engine has for air being supplied to it so if you've got yourself a two JZ to work on you're a lucky person. They're wonderful engines. You can make substantial power gains. Please let us know in the comments what mods you've done to your 2JZ, what your experiences are. If you disagree with anything I've said, please let me know. Um, I, I never profess to be an expert. I found that the more you learn about something, the more you realize you don't know about it. So it's really good just to ask for feedback and get other people's comments. It just broadens our understanding of the subject of 2JZ engines, mods and upgrades. So thanks for watching. Don't forget Forget to stay tuned. Got a little favor to ask, can you just drop us a like and please in the comments let us know what car you've got, what your plans are for it, what mods you've got and what your experiences are. It really helps us to get out there. We're a very small channel so we really appreciate the feedback from our viewers. Don't forget to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.